اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله الكبير We're grateful to God again, and and uh, it's huge um, blessing and opportunity that we have today, that we are making contact with our Creator, and should should cherish this moment, and uh, make sure that we understand it, and so um, that all the blessings that we have is coming from God. And I want to take this opportunity to uh, <clears throat> to uh, congratulate everyone on the first day of. Ramadan and uh, and inshallah that uh, we're going to have a good month in front of us ahead of us and, uh, and get closer to our Creator. Uh, so this is this is a huge uh, opportunity and blessing that that we are starting today um, uh, with uh, with the Friday prayers and uh, it just happened to be coincident together these two events and so it's it's a it's a double blessing for us today and so we should be grateful to the source of this uh, this uh, coincidence that we have today that's uh, two events are in coincident and uh, and so we should we should be we should be uh, doubly grateful to God for this uh, occasion um, <clears throat> so gratefulness is is a godlike quality and we should we should uh, follow his path and uh, try to uh, respond in kind and uh, and so uh, it's it's a uh, it's incumbent upon us to 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 act uh, in appreciative uh, and a grateful way uh, towards our creator um, <clears throat> today what i wanted to discuss with you i wanted to go to uh, our website and i put this one for ramadan 1443 so again, happy Ramadan, everyone. And uh, so today is the first day, and the last day of uh, Ramadan is April 30th. So the whole month of April is basically the month of Ramadan. And so that's another <coughs> another coincidence here. And uh, <coughs> so God is telling us at 2183, He says, Oh, you faithful, fasting is decreed for you, as it was decreed for those before you, that you may attain righteousness. Specific days, hence, if one of you is ill or on a trip, the same number, the same number of days shall be substituted later on. And it is incumbent upon those who can afford it that they should repay by feeding the poor. Therefore, whoever does any good beyond the call of duty is good for him. And fasting is best for you if you only knew. So here again, I emphasize this fact that uh, if you miss any days and you're sick or something, or you know you have COVID, or so many things are going around now, so many bugs and other issues that you have that you may not be able to fast, um, uh, just just count those days that you are not fasting, and then later you can you can go ahead and fast and. Uh, and God accepts us graciously. Um, so, and then God says, so this is, this is period. That's period. Okay? Period. Uh, so, specific days, hence, if one of you is ill or on a trip, the same number of days shall be substituted later, period. And it is incumbent upon those who can afford it. They should repay by feeding the poor. This is a brand new statement. Why, why God says repay? You see, people took this repay as, as repaying for your not fasting. You see? You see how do you do it? So if you're rich, you can buy your fasting. If you're poor, too bad. Okay? So this is the God that they want to worship. Okay? That's, that God is not God. That's not the God we are worshiping. God that we are worshiping is a fair God. 
Making money is not easy. I keep telling you, making money is not easy. Just because you buy a property, okay, and that property goes a factor of 400 or something in 10 years or 15 years, that doesn't mean it's going to happen to everybody. Somebody could buy a property and they find radioactive material in that area. And that money that you spend is going to go down the drain. And then the next guy comes and buys a property just like he did. And they gain a factor of 40, 50, 100 in 10, day, in 10 years. So it's not easy to make money. So that person has to repay God for that, for that blessing that he or she had. Okay, so God says repaying by feeding the poor, not to buy your fasting. Doesn't count, my friends. Therefore, whoever does any good beyond the call of duty, see, this even calls it arbitrary for you, that you don't have to do it, but if you do it, this is beyond the call of duty. Okay. See how gentle God is? It's good for him. And fasting is the best for you if you only knew. Now, let's see what the next verse says. The month of Ramadan is the month during which the Quran was revealed as guidance for the people and proofs of guidance and the statute book. Therefore, whoever witnesses this month shall, shall fast therein, and whoever is ill or on a trip shall substitute as the same number of days later, period. There is no mention of buying your, your fasting here. Because that one meant absolutely something else. So forget about this, this, this idea that you can buy your, your, your fast, your number of you know, the days that you are missing, you can buy them out. No, you can't. Okay? Now, what about if you can't fast? You can't fast. God knows that. God knows if you're sick. God knows that. God knows you don't have a stomach. God knows you have ulcer. God knows that. God says now, he says that, you see, it should substitute it is, same number of days. He wants you to be comfortable. He does not wish you hardship while you are completing this duty and you shall glorify God for guiding you that you may be appreciative. Then God is talking about appreciativeness and gratefulness. And then he gives you the good news. When my servants ask you about me, I'm always nearby. I respond to the call of the caller when he calls. Therefore, they shall respond to me and have faith in me that they may find guidance. Okay. God says guidance only comes from God. And we have to have we have to respond to God and we have to have faith in God that we may find guidance. There is no other way you can find guidance. Sometimes ask this, well, these other guys are also nice guys, but they don't believe in God. No, they're not nice guys. Because you are, you are neglecting what God is saying here. Okay, what about these communists? They seem to be nice guys, but they don't believe in God. No, they're not. They're going to get it. You just wait. Okay? You have to respond to God and have faith in Him in order that they may find guidance. Otherwise, they can't. They're not guided people. They are thinking about themselves. That act of goodness is not altruistic. Have something up the sleeves. That's why they're helping you. It seems to you that it's like help, 
but it's not. They have an agenda. Okay, so this is the good news here. When they call upon me, you see, when my servants call, ask you about me, I'm always nearby. I respond to the call of the caller when he calls. Therefore, they shall respond to me and have faith in me that they may find guidance. Okay. Guidance only comes when you have faith in God, when you respond to God. Otherwise, there are no other guidance. Okay. We went through this good news last week. Okay, and I want to go back to it again. So I change all those translations in chapter 79. Okay. Chapter 79 is called, the name of it is called the Snatchers. Okay. Not the ones who snatched, not the ones who will snatch, Snatchers. That's the job. Okay. It's a timeless thing. There's no time stamp. Okay, an event has a time stamp. Either happens in the past, present, or future. This one doesn't have it. So he says, now, the correct understanding should be, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, by the violent snatchers. Not by the one who snatch. By the violent snatchers. By the gentle removers. by the floaters everywhere. Also, by quick racers, also by executors of command. This goes on all the time. There is no time stamp with this. This is a timeless dimension that God is describing for us. Okay? then we're still asking questions about gods that are not fair to God to ask those questions. Questions that are absolutely meaningless. And we have no clue how to respond to those questions in our own minds. And when, you, when we do not do that, then we are going to become disbelievers. We are going to be rejectors of the word of God. Because we don't understand it. We don't understand who God is. We don't understand that God is the creator of time. Okay? Asking questions like what was before the Big Bang is a meaningless question. Okay? And I said this so many times. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not my saying, actually. It's that Stephen Hawkins said that was given a talk at Caltech, and that's exactly what he said. He said, what was before the Big Bang is a meaningless question. He said, like you are on the North Pole, and you're asking what is two miles north of the North Pole. You've already lost your point of reference. There is no north of the North Pole. So we ask those kind of questions about God. And we lose our faith because of that. Because we have some kind of degree. Okay, we think that we know we know the, the knowledge of the universe. We're the wise old sage. Okay, that's what we think. The problem is that we are the ones who are asking meaningless questions. And there are no answers to meaningless questions. So this is the context that we have to look at these verses, that God is telling us that this is not a timeless dimension. And this is, what I'm, this is what I'm describing to you from the point of view of these servants of God that he has working for him. Okay? And they are in a different realm all by themselves. They are not in the realm of that what the space-time continuum actually governs. In a different realm, that time is not an object anymore. It's not, it's not an issue anymore. Okay? 
A lot of people ask, well, we could get bored in, in paradise. Yeah, because they think of time. Well, for time, you're going to get bored. This cyclic thing makes you, makes you get bored. Okay, because you know the spring is going to come, you know the summer is going to come, you know the winter is going to come. After a while, you get bored. It's not that interesting to you. As you get older, these things are not that interesting to you. Okay? Because of time. God is describing a, a realm, a universe, that time is not an issue anymore. How can you get bored in there? Boredom comes from time and repetition. And so we have to understand these things. We have to analyze it in our own minds and then make a decision about God. Not to ask some silly questions from ourselves and then unable to respond to that question, then that, that the consequences are grave because now we are losing faith in our Creator. Which is the worst thing that could happen to us. Because we have some kind of degree or something. And then we think that, as I said, you know, we know everything. Okay? So we have to we have to make sure, as I said, that we stick with the Quran. Okay. And here here God is telling us this. And you go to chapter fifty six, same thing. 56. Well, I, I just wanted to... Okay. God is calling these people, a group of people, that are stratified in three different groups. The best ones, he says, and the dwellers of misery, or, no, not, not that one, I'm sorry. And the front runners far ahead of all. What Sabahuna Sabahun. Okay. These are the front runners again, again in a timeless dimension. It's a place that time has no meaning. Okay. So how can you get bored in a place like that? That's that's what that's what we have to understand. Okay, that there is no boredom in heaven. And so this is the beauty of this is the beauty of, of of the Quran as we can realize it. And as I said, we have to pay attention to it and and get ourselves out of this that as though you know we you know somehow the things that comes, you know, to us, and and somehow we think that we think that we know the subject and stuff like that is completely far off from what the Quran says. Okay. God didn't say that you can buy your fasting. Okay. You can do it later. If it's very difficult for you, God knows that. If you cannot do it because it has a lot of difficulty for you, creates a lot of difficulty for you, okay? God knows that. He says He wants your comfort. He doesn't want any discomfort because of this, because you want to go and, and, and fulfill this duty that God has decreed upon us as a mercy from Him. Okay. He's talking to those people that seem to be that making money for them is very easy. And they have no idea that they should be repaying that blessing that God has given them with feeding a hungry person. Okay. And they come back in there and then as soon as they, you know, they have a little bit of hunger or something, then, you know, there's too much for them. They will, let's not do it. And, and we just can pay somebody you know, some food or something. No, that's not the substitute for that. The substitute for that is fasting later on if you're sick. 
The substitute for that is that you do it later on. The substitute is that is not paying money. It's not feeding the poor. That substitutes for the blessing of the wealth that God had given you. Okay, because now you're grateful to God for giving you that giving you that thing. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and we'll we'll finish this unit. Allah will be here. Subhan Rabbi al Azim. الله الكبير الله الكبير <تصفيق> سبحان ربي الأعلى الله الكبير الله الكبير سبحان ربي الأعلى الله الكبير الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم مغيرين مقلوب عليهم ولا الله الكبير